Hello, my name is Grace Dwyer, and I'm here today to show you how to use databases to conduct any research you might have to do as an English major at Penn State. So let's get started. First, we're going to talk about why you might want to use a database versus just searching in the library catalog. So there are a couple of reasons. One is that databases give you great access to journal articles. You can use keywords to search for articles that are relevant to your topic. Even if your library has the print run of a journal that you know will be useful to you, it can still be hard to find an article on your specific topic. That's where keyword searching really comes in handy. When you search a database, you have the option of just looking at peer-reviewed content, so it can be more trustworthy than other content you access through the internet. Also, databases can provide more up-to-date research on some topics, so you have to be careful because sometimes there are limits on when databases can upload new content. For example, in some databases, there are six months between when the article is originally published and when it's uploaded to the database. Though we'll mainly be talking about finding scholarly articles today, databases index all sorts of content, including popular magazines and even books, so they're a great place to do lots of different kinds of research. First, let's look at how to access database content from the library's homepage. So if you type in this search box right here, you're using Lion Search, which actually searches most of the library's database content as well as the traditional library catalog. So that's a great place to start your research. But let's say you wanted to use an individual database. You can click on this tab right here, and they're either available alphabetically, or you can type the name of the database that you wanted to go to. So let's say we wanted to look at Project Muse. So we would type Project Muse. And here's a link to it, as well as a little more information as to what the database is actually about. In order to show you how databases work, we're going to look together for literary criticism on Shirley Jackson's short story, The Lottery. This is a list of some good places to look when you're looking for information on an author or literary criticism. Today we're going to look at the first two databases, but the other four are also great. So feel free to play around with them after this demonstration. Let's start our search today with Lion Search, which, like I said before, searches the library's catalog as well as a lot of its database content. So you can use this box right here search in Lion Search, but we're going to click on the advanced option so we can see all the things that you can use to customize your search. So this is sort of where you put your keywords. Um, in this case, I'm going to start with the lottery. And we're going to need more keywords, but for now, let's just see what happens when we do that. And let's skip all these other options for now. So search. Now, this is a lot of results many of which have nothing to do with what we're looking for. So let's try and customize our search a little bit. Let's do the lottery and also the, the author's name. And I'm not going to put that in quotes because I don't know what format they're going to have the name, either in the subjects or in the title of the article. We don't know who the article is written by or what the title is, so we're going to skip these specific fields nor are we looking for articles from a specific journal. We are interested in just journal articles, so I'm going to check that option. And we don't really want newspaper articles or book reviews, so I'm going to exclude those from our results. And let's see how that changes what we come up with. So now we only have 95 results, which is a lot better, a lot more manageable number of results to look at. Though these results are looking better, we still have a lot of them. So let's see if we can narrow it down even further using this bar on the left. And as you can see, there are a lot of the same options that we looked at in um, the, the original search window are available on the left. So we could, if we changed our mind, say that we do want to include book reviews, but we still don't. So let's close that window for now. So let's go ahead and click on Literary Criticism under Subject Terms to see if that helps us narrow our search. And it does, but as you can see, um, it did take out a result that was definitely relevant. So Subject Terms can definitely be helpful, 
but sometimes not all of the articles are um, classified in exactly the same way. So in this case, I'm going to take away that subject term again, just so we have our full range of results. Okay, so now that we have a good number of results right here at the top that look like they might be interesting to us, now let's look at how to save and export citations in Learning Search. So when you hover over the record, you'll see this folder icon. And if you click it, you'll see it'll automatically go to your saved items. And you can clear those saved items at any time. And then when you're ready to leave the search, just click on the Saved Items button. And you can export your citations in a whole variety of formats, including APA and MLA, which are probably the formats you'll be using. You can also export them to any of these citation managers, or email, or just print them out. And it will also include a link. So let's say we actually want to look at the, one of these articles. So we're going to click on full text online for any of the ones that have the little online icon next to them. And that'll bring up a window, or it should, loading. That'll show you where you can then access the article. And if you just click on this article button, it'll take you right to the full text. Now, if it's not available online, it won't have this online sticker, and it will only say citation online. So when you click on that citation, it'll just be the citation because there are no electronic holdings. Once you have the citation, you can then take the name of the journal and see if the library maybe has a print run of it, and that's one way to find the article. Or you can keep the citation and request an interlibrary loan if Penn State libraries don't have access to this material. Let's go ahead and look at the next database on our list, which is JSTOR. I'm going to go ahead and go to JSTOR using this database search. So I type in JSTOR. And then just click on this link. Now JSTOR is great for general humanities coverage, including literature. And it could be that we'll get some better results for our topic. Um, so let's try and just do a basic search this time using the lottery and then the author's name. And that's generally a good rule of thumb when you're looking for criticism on a specific work. So, but again, we're coming up with all of these reviews. So let's see if we can narrow the search at all. Let's just click on modify search. And then once we're back here, click on Advanced Search. So we still want a lottery. And we have a couple options of where we're going to search for that. But I think I'm going to do full text, which is like a keyword search. And also we want Shirley Jackson. But we're only interested in articles, so I'm going to check that. And we want articles in English. And then we also have the option here of narrowing it by discipline, which actually tends to work a little better than um, subject terms, because really we want stuff that's published in journals that cover literature. So I'm going to go ahead and click that box. Let's try the search again. So this time we have 80 results, which is a lot better. And as you can see, there are different articles than the ones we encountered in um, Lion Search, and articles that are really relevant for us, articles that look like they're good criticism. And again, if you click on the magnifying glass, just wait a second while it loads, it'll show you um, exactly where your search terms came up in the article, and also the citation. And um, this green check on the left see, says we have full access to this content, which means we have the full text. There's no need to look for the full text elsewhere. And if we want to save citations in JSTOR, it's very similar to Lion Search. You're going to click on the ones that you want to save. Let's say I want this one on censorship. And maybe this one also on Charlie Jackson and the Female Gothic. So I have my two articles, then I'm going to click Save Citation at the top. And if I do that, it'll save it in my JSTOR account, 
And if you don't want to make a JSTOR account, you can just email your citation or export it to a program like MathWorks. So now we know a couple of different places to look for literary criticism. But what if you need to do some research that's not really in the realm of literature? Now I'm going to show you how to browse other kinds of databases and use one database that um, you may not be familiar with. So first you're going to go to the Research tab and then click on Research Guides. And what, what that's going to link to is a list of guides on all sorts of different topics. There's a lot on the different academic divisions offered at Penn State, but there's also a bunch on narrower topics. For example, advertising history. Let's say you've been given an assignment to research two sides of a controversial topic, and you chose to do your report on vaccine safety in children. First, let's navigate to that list of databases. So again, we want to go to Research, and then Research Guides. And you have to think about sort of what division or what topic might be in here. Um, and I think it might be under Medicine, so let's check that. So we come up with all the Research Guides that have Medicine mentioned in the description. So let's click on Medicine. And it'll give you a list of some good core resources. So let's look up um, vaccinations in PubMed, which is sort of a basic medical resource. My advice when you're using a database that you might not be familiar with is to think of a couple keywords that'll help with your search, but then also really play around with that advanced search. So let's click on the advanced search option. And it looks like they have a Boolean search builder. So let's type in one of our keywords. Let's use vaccine with an asterisk. And what that asterisk does is it means that any um, letters that come after vaccine will be included in the search, like vaccine or vaccination or vaccinations. Let's also include child, again with an asterisk, so we include children. And then let's add one more. Let's say safety. And click search. So we've got a lot of articles. And let's see if we can limit the search in any way. So we're going to click on limits. And let's say I'm only looking for the very most recent developments in vaccines. So let's look at the last two years of articles. And English. I don't know a lot about medicine, so I don't really know what kind of an article I'm looking for, so I'm going to leave this blank. But we do know that we want articles about vaccines in humans. And we can actually limit it here to include children. So that's a good extra step to take. And let's go ahead and do that search again. So that has really narrowed down our articles and given us a better pool of stuff to look at. And if you look on the sidebar here, this can also be pretty helpful. Um, it's articles that include the words that you looked for in your search. Now we have some medical articles on the safety of vaccination in children. So we have one side of the story. But let's say we wanted to find some articles, say, from a newspaper. So really quickly, I'm going to show you another database. This one is called Newspaper Source, but there's lots of databases that compile newspapers, um, and they work very similarly. So I'm just going to show you this one really quickly. Uh, right now we're set on finding all my search terms, so I don't have to do a Boolean search or anything like that. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same search I did on PubMed. So let's do child, vaccine, and safety. And let's go ahead and limit this from January 2010 to December 2011. And let's say we want all articles, so it includes any newspaper and magazine articles that might be in the database. And we'll just click search. So as you can see, this brings up a different kind of article, but one that also might be valuable in your research. Um, and again, you can narrow the the number of articles you have using these subject terms here on the left. 
Thanks for watching.